Continuing with our web project from the last section, uh, now we're going to create the servlet and then link it to our EJB and have it forward to our JSB and fill in all the code to get our view count working. So first, so we'll come up here and right click the project name again and go to new servlet. You can leave the JSP file open in the background. The package will be condive ibm.developerworks.ejb3 crash course same package name I've been using so far and I'll just leave it at top level package and I'll call it blog entry and then hit finish now this servlet will act kind of as an intermediate step um, it will use our EJB and retrieve the current view count and then it will redirect to the JSP page and send the JSP page the view count inside an attribute. So first we want to get rid of some of the placeholder fluff that uh, Eclipse has added for us. So the constructor to the blog entry isn't necessary. We can leave the serial version UID up there. And we're not going to be handling post, we're only going to be handling HTTP get. So go ahead and remove the do post method. And then we can delete this stub comment and uh, delete this Java doc. You should, you should probably at a later time put a real Java doc up there, depending on if you actually document your code or not. Uh, but there's no point in including that initial Java doc. So the do get method. Uh, first thing we're going to do when somebody loads the page, and this method is what it's called when somebody loads the page, is we want to increment the view counter and get the number of views now. Uh, because obviously since we're loading the page, we want you know the view counter to increase by one. So in order to do that, we're going to need a variable, a member variable, which is our EJB. So First you declare private local view counter, which is the local interface to our EJB, if you remember you know, several sections ago. Um, and again, that's over here in our EJB project, a local view counter. So if you recall, this is the interface local view counter, and it has two methods, increment and get value. And We'll use the increment method because that both increments the value and returns it. So obviously hold your mouse over that and make sure to import our package. And it looks like we didn't actually link to our EJB. So if we right click web crash course blog and we go to build path and configure build path, we should be able to sort this out in just a moment. And we want required projects. We want to add a required project and we want to add our EJB. So we definitely need that EJB to be on our build path. And that allows us now to hold our mouse over local view counter and import it from our EJB project. So now we have a private member variable for the EJB, but in order to actually get the EJB, an instance of the EJB, when the page is loaded, we need to add a special annotation to this, at sign EJB. And go ahead and hold your mouse and import that from javax.ejb. And that annotation handles everything for us. When this servlet is initiated by the user visiting the page, this view counter variable will have an instance of our EJB inside of it by the time we reach this doGet method. So we're able to not worry about instantiating the, e the EJB, don't have to worry about implementation of that at all. We just can be able to say view counter dot increment and feed it a page ID. And then we can store that in an int and say uh, int ejb view count maybe equals view counter dot increment just like that. 
Um, so it's very convenient to, that the view counter is already filled in for us like that. And I passed in a 1 because if you recall just a couple of sections ago when we set up our database, we inserted one record into it. And since we declared the ID field to start with 1 and increment by 1, that first row had an ID of 1. And that's what we're passing into the increment method here. So now, in just one line of code, we have called our EJB, we've incremented the view counter, that is already stored in the database because the EJB handles the database for us, and we've gotten our new view count. And at this point, all we have to do is send the view count to our JSP page. And so we do that by using the request variable here. It's passed into our do get method. We say request dot set attribute. We're going to call this attribute view count and give it the EJB view count. In fact, even better, we can just go ahead and construct a string with that. So we can say views colon plus the EJB view count. And then over in our GS JSP page, we can simply add that string to the page. And now we simply need to send this request over to the first blog post.jsp page. And so we do this with an object called request dispatcher. Request dispatcher, and we declare a new request dispatcher. And then hold your mouse over that and import that package, javax.servlet. And what we're going to do is we're going to set it equal to git servlet context dot git request dispatcher and git request dispatcher takes one string argument which is uh, the page that you want to forward this request onto so we'll say slash first blog post dot jsp And now that we have our request dispatcher, all we do is say rd.forward, and we give it the request and the response, which Eclipse, of course, is already filled in. Oops, sorry. And that is all we need to do in our doGet method. We incremented the view counter and got it. We set it as an attribute to our request, and then we use this request dispatcher to forward the request on to first blog post.jsp. And now, finally, we can go back and add our view count to the page. So you come back to this JSP right here. And where it says view count here, we're just going to delete that. And we want to add a code segment. So you do less than sign and percent. And then we're going to do several things. Now, we have access to a variable called response, which, of course, is the, uh, the HTTP response. And so we're going to set a few headers now. We're going to set pragma to the value of no cache. And we're going to set cache control also to no cache. And then we're going to set sorry about that, response dot set date header expires to zero. And now that we set these three headers, you can see that two of them say no cache, and one of them say that the page expires at zero, which is actually the date, uh, the, the epoch back in 1970. So the combined three of these headers means that any browser which visits this page will not cache this page. We don't want the page to be cached because when the user hits refresh, we want the view count to increment by one every time. Um, whereas if the browser cached the page, then when they hit refresh, they would see the same page because it was stored locally on their disk. And then we just need to display the views. So we say string view count equals request dot get attribute view count. And that's the attribute that we set over in blog entry.java. And that is of type object, so we have to cast it to a string. Because we know that it's a string, of course. And just in case view count 
is equal to null. We want to set view count equal to some default, so we'll just set it views unknown. How about that? Uh, because it shouldn't be null, but if the if the user accesses this JSP page directly instead of accessing it through our servlet, then that will be the case. And finally, uh, we just want to echo the view count. So you can use less than percent equals view count. And that outputs the view count to the page, which was set up here with our get attribute call. And this concludes this section. Please continue on to the next section where we'll run our application on our WebSphere server and see the results of our work.